Hey everyone. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Seemed a shame to switch that off actually. It's uh, really beautiful. That's the great uh, Tibetan bell chant, the great bell chant, the end of suffering. Ah, so I thought I would play something soothing this morning. And uh, good to see you all here. Let's just come across the screens. Give us a wave. Hey, hello. Good to see so many of you. Hi to Angela there. Hi to, hi Brian as well. Um, cool. Okay. So, um, what to say? I think I think we'll just go straight into uh, opening to to a discussion actually <laughs> oh i'm feeling quite uh, i'm feeling quite ground down by the system and quite exhausted um at the moment so i do want to just read out an invocation so maybe if you want to uh can you all hear me by the way yes you can good um, if you want to speak, then maybe you could put, uh, using the reactions, put the, ha the yellow hand up in the reactions along the bottom so that uh, you come to the top of the screen and I know that you would like to come on and speak. So I'm just going to do the invocation and I'm going to do the prayer of the seven galactic directions today. From the East, House of Light, may wisdom dawn in us so we may see all things in clarity. From the North, House of Night, may wisdom ripen in us so we may know all from within. From the West, House of Transformation, may wisdom be transformed into right action so we may do what must be done. From the South, house of the eternal sun, may right action reap the harvest so we may enjoy the fruits of planetary being. From above, house of heaven, where star people and ancestors gather, may their blessings come to us now. From below, house of earth, may the heartbeat of her crystal core bless us with harmonies to end all war. From the center, galactic source, which is everywhere at once, may everything be known as the light of mutual love. Aho metakuyasin for all our relations, wherever they may be on the planet. Okay, so first of all, let's come to Hannah, who's got her hand up. Hi, Hannah. Hi, can you hear me? Hello, yes, welcome. You're looking great. Are you, where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from Kenya. Oh, wow. And um, I've been following you since your first video in uh, September, I think it was. And it, it was incredible actually to see that video because um, it, <laughs> It was like I'd been sort of on my own and on this journey out here. Um, and I trained as a yoga teacher in that time and started to wake up through the training of the yoga teaching. And that's uh, right, it's my children. <laughs> and then saw your video and have been kind of what I've been just following you ever since. So I just really wanted to say thank you for all that you're doing. Um, yeah. So thank you. That's really all I wanted to say today and just to everyone to stay strong and that, you know, just keep shining light. That's sort of the way I'm trying to do it at the moment is just shining light. I've got like an Instagram page for yoga and I just share quotes and yes. you can hear my children crying. <laughs> uh, yeah, so really, I just, yeah, just kind of taking from your lead, really, you're really inspiring. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Hannah. Just give us a quick uh, overview of what things are like in Kenya. I mean, are, are you locked down? Are there restrictions? Is there a VAX plan? Yeah, there's absolutely a VAX plan. And the majority of people I know have had it out here. Um, the expats watch the BBC. 
and they there's been masks in place for a year now and you know we can't not wear one we have to wear one because um you'll just get fined on the spot and you know local people can't afford that so you just watch people with their mask on and then they just take it down as soon as the policeman disappears kind of like that molly molly and um there's yeah vax program in place they're not saying it's mandatory yet i'm sort of waiting to see what happens but my husband's a teacher and they offered it to him and all of the teaching staff have had it um friends have had it been really ill after um and my partner's quite asleep so i'm trying to sort of convince him not to have it um he's been really ill and i'm convinced it's from shedding i mean i've been around quite a few people and got quite ill after but i just don't know i just won't know whether that's um actually hi hannah you seem to have frozen actually. I don't know if that's me or you, but uh, okay, thank you. Um, all right, let me let me mute you back there. And uh, I'm hoping that I haven't lost connection. Anyway, let's come to Philippa Lay next, who is, has got her hand up. So thank you, Hannah, for opening the call. Hi, everyone. Hi, Rachel. Hi, hi. Did you get the book? I sent you. I did. Oh, yes. Well, thank well. you. Thank you so much for that. I haven't, I have to admit, I haven't read it yet. So I will do soon. It's just hacks and facts to cope with crap because we need it. So I've got two questions for you today. I had a terrible experience last Monday, a week ago today. Um, my gut told me to phone my 18 year old daughter and I did. And she was in the car with her father going to have the jab. Um, my sheer hysteria managed to postpone it um but i have a month to and the thing is that you know i've been enlightened for five years i've you know ever since i nearly died i i knew that i could heal my you know when i went on my self-healing journey and sas was part of that self-healing journey so she knows how powerful the body is but she you know she watches mainstream media and and um it's I have a month now anyway to find something she doesn't believe that the stuff I share with her is worth anything to a degree because it's not science based so she wants scientific articles and all the scientists that are standing up are discredited that's what happens you know and she'll look them up on WikiLeaks and go oh they're rubbish and I go that's because the fact checkers write wickedly and so I, is there anything that you can point me in the right direction to Rachel that I could show her um that is extremely powerful please oh my goodness gracious I mean, that's that's Just such a back on that <laughs> it, it's it's such a difficult one isn't it because we're we're trying to we're, we're trying to kind of save the situation uh, and it, it just feels like when people have made that decision that they believe in the the, the official you know the official program it, it's quite a challenging one isn't it i mean dr vernon coleman his videos yeah. completely uh, and also you know even the MHRA own statistics. Uh, I mean, there's so much content, but if people are not open to it, um, then then it's very difficult, isn't it? Because the brainwashing is so deep. I, I just really don't know what to suggest. I'm just so pleased that my sons have, I kind of managed to break the, the program early enough for them to question. But even then, one of my son's closest friends has just had it, and he's only uh, he's only sort of just around, just turned eighteen, so young, so the unnecessary. Day, and the he's that I phoned my daughter. Literally, all of her friends had had a text in that morning inviting them to go, and they all went. And the same with my elder daughter. Virtually all of her friends went that day as well. They just called in all kind of eighteen to twenty year olds um yeah this daughter 
thinks I'm mad, but that's fine. Um, she still loves me with my insanity. And um, she's just decided just to wait a little bit and to see what happens. Um, but she, she's, she doesn't really have an interest in it. She's just kind of going, well, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. But if it stops me going on holiday, I'll have to have it. Um, this is so hard. It's really hard. And then you hear like Boris Johnson saying, and, and people like Bill Gates, Boris Johnson, the official rhetoric of we've got to vaccinate everyone on the planet. And, and we all know in our heart of hearts, they're not interested in our health. It's a mass genocide program. You know, we all know in our heart of hearts that that is the truth behind this. And uh, it's going to, I, I just, I, I hate to sound like doom and gloom, but I have to say, I, I do feel it's going to be a very difficult um, next six months to a year when the impact of this, when the fallout happens, because I, I mean, if you follow Rachel Speaks Out, my Telegram channel, you'll see I, I do share relevant things, which because things are coming across my screen the whole time. So I tend to cherry pick what I think are the most impactful things and one of the most worrying things was that the, the tenders that have been put out by the local councils for body collectors which are commencing on the 1st of September like multi multi million pound contracts for for contractors to collect dead bodies I mean if that is not worrying I don't know what is so they know that they know that this they know there's going to be mass death this winter I know I've seen it. so my my second question is um and I don't have much information on it so I wondered if you could enlighten me um so a load of Dr Fauci's emails have been leaked and do you think that this is going to make a massive impact into um getting information out or do you think it'll be covered up to be honest, I, I don't know what to think anymore, Philippa, because it, it, what a lot of people are saying that that is a controlled burn of part of the forest to preserve. So, so they're making these people fall guys, uh, potentially, and also to try to underpin the truth of it, that it is real and it was leaked from a laboratory to escalate the fear. I mean, I, I just don't know what to, <laughs> I'm sorry to sound vague, I just don't know what to uh, what to say anymore. There's so much evidence. There's so much evidence. It's for those of us who know, realize what's going on, it's so obvious. And yet for people who are in the brainwash program, they are absolutely convinced. I mean, I, just as a little anecdote, my local community support group, which is one of the things that keeps me sane at the moment, just this beautiful little group that we formed locally here in the Peak District. Well, on Sundays we meet up and yesterday we decided to go to the National Stone Centre at Worksworth and we went in the cafe there to have a cup of coffee. And uh, basically it was just almost like being in a Monty Python sketch because none of us were wearing masks. None of us would comply with any of the, and the woman behind the counter is like, I've had, I've had peop single people, you know, several people who are exempt, but not a whole group of people who are exempt. And the guy, when he took the money was like, he took the money and he was squirting Dettol gel and wiping his hands. And the, every transaction he squirted Dettol gel. And I just said, you know, don't go near any flames with that because you you know it's highly flammable and and it was just it was just like just like being in some form of insanity and we were just there being normal and uh yeah it was it's like being in a in a strange alien world at the moment I, it's the only way i can describe it anyway if anyone's got any answers for philippa please would you come on and uh, share because I I'm I've, I've, <laughs> I'm all out of answers on this. I'm just doing my my best to 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 just pres just to preserve my own center, just to be with local people who feel the same way. I, I just given up trying to sort of fix the world in any way. 
So sorry about that, Philippa. I know it's really upsetting. Thank you, everyone. I, I can see everything in the chat and I'm just running through it now. So bless you. Yeah. OK, so let's come to Francis Sweeney. We need some answers for Philippa and everyone. Does, does anyone have any hope, rays of hope? Good, good morning, um, Rachel. This is my first success at uh, logging on to the meeting. And hi to everybody. It's brilliant to be here. I'm in Ireland. Um, I'm a recently retired secondary school teacher, home economics teacher, um, and I practice kinesiology and Reiki um, as a therapy for over 10 years. Um, Philippa, my heart goes out to you because uh, just yesterday I discovered that my own daughter, 30 year old daughter, um, had her second jab. Hadn't a clue of anything about this until yesterday. Well, I kind of suspected because of the way I was feeling ar you know, around her physically um, and my, you know, feeling sick, headaches. I had a flare up of thrombosis in my leg. Um, and then I just came out and I said, well, have you got it? And she said, well, you know, that's a very personal question to ask me, but I knew straight away. I said, there's no point. I've seen that face too many times in your life. So um, she said, yes. So I said, you've been around me, I said, for what, nine weeks now or whatever, um, with, you know, carrying whatever, I said, there's a possibility of the, of the shedding. So I was just before this call, I was on to another friend. She's a retired nurse and she's just a mine of information in relation to papers and evidence and all that kind of stuff around um, the vaccines and the coronavirus. And um, she suffers from Lyme disease herself. So she has been, you know, at home um, for a few years now uh, because of her ill health. But there is a doctor. I don't know if you've heard about him. He's, he's called, I put it in the chat there as well, his web link, um, Dr. Dietrich um, Klinghart. And he has a lot of, say, remedies. He has a lot of information there. He's not on social media because the very reason he's not widely known um, is because he doesn't want to be discredited so there's a link there if you want to go and have a look at um, you know he runs zoom calls as well with information for people um, on a weekly basis on Thursdays um, if that's any compensation another thing is that I have um, uh, investigated into and myself and my family who have been exposed to it and you know friends who are awake um, is the pine needle tea and tinctures and like I really need to start taking that myself so there's an order on the way to me uh, because of my risk of blood clotting naturally anyway from you know hereditary factors in the family um, so it's preventative it's really about you know boosting your immune system taking your zinc taking your quercetin and um, your vitamin d your high doses of vitamin c um, and that's because, as I said, you're going to be walking around and you don't know who's vaccinated now. It's, it's just ironic the way it's turned on its head. Oh, by beware the unmasked and the vaccinated it was. And now it's, you know, for those of us who, you know, are keeping away from that stuff, we don't have any choice at the moment. You know, it's in our family. Like it's come right on my doorstep into my home now. And um, it's like, how do we make the best of this now to protect ourselves? And yeah those around us oh thanks francis thanks for coming on and sharing yeah this is so difficult isn't it when it's actually within our family i mean my mm -hmm. son has got a whole rash which looks like shingles to me because he's been around his father and um you know it is worrying it is really worrying yeah okay thank you for coming on i'm going to come to adrian john oliver next um Hi, Adrian. Would you like to come on? Is he frozen? Um, Adrian, John, Oliver, no. Um, let's come to Peter of the, is that Peter of the Awakened? I can't quite yes, whole yes, thing. it is. I have a very um, forceful Twitter page as well, which is fo which is followers are uh, 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 cramping up now because they are waking up now i've got two books which i've uh, been reading and i'll just show you one of them this will help philippa 
it was tried to be banned in Britain, but they've uh, they managed to. Do you remember the German doctor who was arrested at Hyde Park Speaker's Corner? He was talking about this book, and uh, that's why they arrested him. Anyway, they managed to get, uh, by lawsuits, managed to get the book printed. Where did this start? I'll tell you where this all started. It started after my father came back from, and it's not my father's fault, but he, bless him, he was one of those people who fought at 18 year old against the Nazis. Um, so really the Rothschilds can make a lot of money on each side. This is where it started. Operation Paperclip, where America took, oh, I think it was 1,600 uh, uh, Nazi scientists over to America in the latter end of the war, which was, uh, they knew it was going to, they knew, the scientists knew that it was going to go. They either went with America or they went with the Russians. So they, uh, they, they collaborated with the USA and uh, decided to go and live in America. They were given homes, literally given homes, and uh, the children that they had was highly educated in early schools. And now formed by von Braun. Uh, Heine van Braun uh, from the, uh, the NASA, and he took him over because he was the guy who was doing the V2 rockets, the V1, the V2 rockets, and there was the V3 rocket, which was a nuclear bomb on it, or an atom bomb, which just dispersed, that blew about uh, 300 feet up, and it would just flatten everything. And uh, so, but, but the Americans were interested in that because they needed to end the war in Japan, and they quickly uh, jumped on that with the British. So we've got a lot to answer for the British and Americans of the past, but we've got to stay positive through this. And I mean, very positive through it. I mean, I, I don't know if you remember the last time I came, I've not been on for a while because I, my father died in, in February of, uh, and they said he had coronavirus. He never did. Uh, I contested it in, in, in court and I got COVID struck off his death certificate. Uh, and no, no, no question. And I only had to just say, what was the, because the coroner said, what is your mitigation for this? It said, well, uh, you should look at Kay Burley's interview with Dominic Rabb in October of 2020, where Dominic Rabb said the PCR test up the nose is only 7% positive, which makes 93% false positives. Cracking, said the, the coroner, struck COVID off straight away. My father had pneumonia. I saw the pneumonia in him. I stayed with him the last 24 hours of his life. I was born with asthma. I have to, I've, I can't get rid of it. I'm struggling. I was, I was told that I could not see my dad unless I wore the face mask. I wore the face mask for 24 hours of his life. And I've had, since then, I've had the worst asthma attack for 45 years. I was breathing in my own rubbish. Uh, and it, as you know, I don't know if you've heard about this from the Ontario, it's either Ontario or Quebec, I'm not sure, somebody might hear will, will help me. The Education Authority decided to have a look at the blue mask that they were going to give to every single student, and they contained fibres of asbestos. So you breathe it in that, it's straight to the lungs, and that's what creates the, the lung cancer. So... <sighs> Yes, they were, they, it was from China. They bought them all from China, so on block. So whichever, whichever person they bought them off, we'll have somebody in this country who's bought the same kind of batch of these masks. And they will have it in Germany, they'll have it in... Uh, anyway, the white mask has also have a problem. So the white and blue masks do have a problem, so you must check. But also on the box, it does say it's not suitable for COVID-19. It says it, it won't help. So, uh, you, know, you know, you're not going to... Uh, it's not going to work, so just ditch it in the bin, man. It's just we're quite weird. I'm going to tell you about. I was in the I was in the near the trough of Boland the other day. If you don't even know, it's North Lancashire, a little place called Slaveburn. <laughs> and I watched people queuing up. Uh, they could take a takeout, and there was a, 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 a there was four people turned up, and one of the uh, the wife said to the husband, "Come on, come on, get my mask out of your pocket, please, or else I can't go in." So he took her mask out of his pocket and gave it to her. She then just put it on. I watched, I was sat on the, on the green field, the really green. It was really comical. As you said, it's very Monty Python. As it came out, she took it off, went here, and he just took it off and screwed it up and put it back in his pocket. <laughs> they don't work. We, we know they don't work. It, it's as simple as that. <clears throat> so my, my, my girlfriend, uh, she's, a, she's a COVID nurse. Well, she's done the COVID in the Middle East. Sorry, sorry, the Far East. Okay, it, Peter, this is your last point now because yeah. I, I need to come to other people. I'll, I'll quickly tell you about this. She says that the masks are, she knows this, she has to wear, obviously, in, in a hospital. 
but she says they do not work. And we need more and more nurses and doctors springing up now and saying they don't. We've got to start to get the whistleblowers in. You know, simple as that, really. And you know, the, 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 just to finish off, please, it's important now. The, uh, the, 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 the G7 is in Cornwall, starts this Friday, the 11th, finishes on Sunday the 12th. If, any, if anything needs to be protested, get down to Carvis Bay Hotel. That's where we're going to stop it. We've got to show them we're not having it. Never mind going to London, Manchester, whatever. Get in a Cornwall. Get down there. What dates is that happening, Peter? Friday the 11th of June until okay. the Sunday the 13th. Surprisingly, the European Championships kick off the same day. Not coincidence, is it? Okay. Oh, so that's a that's an interesting call to action. I haven't seen that one, but that sounds like a, a well worth uh, going, putting some pressure on. Okay, Peter, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Let's come to Judy next, who's waiting patiently. Hello. Hi, Judy. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, hello. <laughs> Hi, I, I just wanted to share uh, a little bit of my story to uh, um, kind of give a little bit of hope. Um, because there, I sort of see an, a number of different people thinking outside the box a little bit as to whilst we can't stop what's going to happen, what we could do to help. Now, last year, I... Um, I had a reflexology business which was crushed and I took a coaching um, qualification, but I didn't know what to do with it. And, and one of the things that kept coming to me was that the future is going to become about frequency medicine, frequencies. And this really just kept, I kept kind of thinking, okay, and there's been a lot about it. Now, um, just briefly, I, I'm only just sort of starting out on this journey, but I've already found someone in Florida who has created frequency libraries for every um, ingredient in the vaccines. So people are starting to think outside the box. She'd also created, um, they call them libraries, uh, frequency libraries for coronavirus, flus and colds. But you know, one, one of the biggest panels was, was the, these ingredients because they will vibrate a certain frequency. Now, whilst that's not going to be necessarily the the golden ticket and the golden solution. Um, it you know it might present a, a, a way that things could be calmed down within the body or whatever. So th this interests me, and it's it's interesting that that people are just thinking, okay, so what what can what can we actually do? So I'm going down that line, and I'm I'm sure that there's going to be a number of people that that crop up that go right there's there's things to be done now and and what can we actually do to help so so yeah i i, I haven't whilst we can't um change globally uh, you know apart from what we're doing ourselves and and you know all all that kind of stuff but um but in terms of people cropping up with other ways that could become healing modalities away from big pharma i'm just sort of starting to see part of that and, and yeah. want to be part of that so yeah yeah for sure we need a very different <clears throat> way of doing health on this planet uh an, a natural healing service not a national health service or yeah a national yeah. harvest service as some people are calling it okay thank you Ju <laughs> judy no problem thanks for coming on <clears throat> okay so uh let's come to Lorraine Tullitz. Hi, Lorraine, can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me now? Yes, hello, yeah, hi. Yeah, hi there. Um, yeah, just on a bit more of a positive note, and I know, I know that not everyone agrees with protesting and what have you, but I did go to the last protest in London um, there were about seven or eight of us, um, and it was such a positive experience. Um, and of course, the media have lied about the numbers there. Um, it was huge, absolutely huge. Um, and I just think sometimes that's just the boost that you need. If you can get to somewhere where you've got like-minded people around you, 
the atmosphere was just amazing but we had severe problems being able to get food and drink because every pub we tried wanted track and trace albeit we were outside and we <laughs> service um in the end we managed to get somewhere that was a an individual um small little italian place and they served us without the track and trace outside but i think we've just got to boycott these big corporations that are putting these rules out don't give them our business because if we if we um if we encourage others to boycott them, they are going to feel it in their pocket. And of course, everything goes back to money. So that really is all I wanted to say is that, yeah, I will certainly go on the next protest. I felt empowered and I felt I was actually doing something. And they can't disguise the amount of people going on these protests indefinitely. I had so much footage out. Yeah. Um, so that's that's all I'd like to say. Yes, thanks, Lorraine, for that. Thank you. And it's always interesting to look at uh, when Hugo Talks mentions this a lot, when uh, there's an article, for example, in the Daily Mail, and all of the comments are like absolutely anti the official. So there is a great wave of people who are waking up and realizing what's going on. And um, let's come to Adrian, <clears throat> John Oliver again. Hope, hopefully you're unfrozen now. Hello, yes, thank you. Um, I want to endorse Dr. Klinghart. I've studied with him and I was aware of the prevention and treatment protocol prior to the first lockdown. Um, so definitely following, worth following Dietrich Klinghart. Um, energy medicine, yes, life alignment is really good. I've got colleagues who are doing quite a lot with people who have had vaccines and also are feeling the effects of being around people who've been vaccinated. And there's a kind of allergy process. I think there's a, some, some potential for allergy to the ingredients in the vaccines, and that's proved helpful in, uh, in working that way with them. Um, I've been well aware that people are not being given informed consent, which they're required by law to receive from their clinician. So I wrote a list of about 22 information points that probably if discussed in advance of a vaccine would constitute informed consent. Um, and I went to the police, reported it. They haven't done anything about it. But it, that information could be an educational tool and indeed a campaigning tool. So I've turned it into a COVID-19 in, in vaccine informed consent checklist. So that has links to all sorts of information which would be good prior to receiving a vaccine or for people. Oh, Adrian seems to have frozen there. I don't know if that's me or him. Frozen mid mid sentence. Well, anyway, Adrian, I'm hoping that you can uh, post a link to that because that sounds really interesting. That informed consent questionnaire uh, might be very helpful, to, especially for people whose relatives are considering the vax to to go through that checklist with the, the, the doctor before they they say yes to it. Okay, let's come to Andy, Andy's Galaxy A12. Hello. Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, okay. Rachel. Hiya. Thanks for all you do. Um, I've been on a few times, but I've never really spoken. Um, I hope you guys try sneakily doing this in my lunch hour in the back room. So I don't think it'd be very impressive if you knew what I was doing. So <laughs> hopefully you can hear me okay and see me okay. Yes. Um, it's just something for um, Philippa, just maybe a bit of advice. Um, I was pretty much going through the same thing. I thought I was going to split with my wife, really. I was going through a terrible time. She thought I was mad and everything completely going insane. But she finally came round, thankfully, so she hasn't had the vaccine, neither have I. Um, basically, it's Dr. Michael Yeadon, I think, was pretty much convinced her, really. And I would, I would definitely say the Planet Lockdown video that did about two or three minutes ago, I think, it was about an hour long. Yes. I think it pretty much, well, that just, she just looked at me. We just had a massive argument. Um, she accused me of looking at stuff all the time when I actually wasn't. And 
I said, she, so it was a good thing. It just made her say, well, let me look at something. And I said, well, if this doesn't convince you, I don't think anything will. And we just sat together and she just, we, 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 calmed, we calmed down and made her a cup of tea and we just sat together. And she just listened to it and she just turned around to me, burst into tears, and just said, I'm right. Well, I'm not right, but Dr. McLeaven is right, sadly. And, um, you know, we, now she comes with me to stand in the park and stuff. And she's been on a, one of the rallies in London and um, just hope to, put, to put, pray to God we can convince our daughters not to take it. So. Uh, that's the best advice I could give if she hasn't shown um, um, her family that. I don't know that I have been really. Um, yeah. So Thanks, I just think yeah, I think everything he says is just just so logical. You know, yeah, it just makes sense to me. You know, and he's clearly you know he's a brave man in my opinion, very brave man. Yeah. He, he's basically lost everything, hasn't he? You know, well, potentially lost everything. You know, lots of friends and works and everything so yeah anyway just that's all I wanted to say really and thank you so much for all you do yeah thank you Andy thanks yeah. for coming on yeah. and maybe you could uh, put the link to that planet lockdown yeah uh, in the can I, I do that will I be able to do that later it's a bit difficult like I'm saying I'm uh, it's in my lunch hour at the moment okay well maybe yeah. if you um I don't know if you're on my Rachel Speaks Out channel but you could maybe yeah on, there. Oh, on Telegram on telegram yeah yeah okay i'll try and do that yeah definitely i'll try and do that later when i get yeah cool okay, okay andy thank you. thank you thanks for coming on um let's just come across the screen see who we've got on we've got 76 people um let's just have a look across <clears throat> it's quite nice just to check in see who we've got Nice to see so many of you. There's Chrissy there. Chrissy joined our um, local community support group yesterday. I don't know, if Chrissy, if you want to come on the call. Um, okay, so let's come next. Who would who would like to speak? Anne, let's come to you. As as I don't think you've been on before. Hi there. Um, I have I have spoken once before actually, oh. but it was a few weeks ago, so that that's fine. And I don't think I was wearing my glasses. I'm wearing my glasses because I want to make sure I give you the right information in a minute. Okay. Um, for, first of all, just to say I I really kind of recognise some people are saying, and and you were saying yourself that you know it gets really hard and you can get really down. But I've been very much involved with one of the Stand in the Park groups. And also recently we did a bit of a protest in Oxford with the meeting of the health ministers prior to the G7 full meetings this week. Um, and just being with like-minded people is such an, an uplift. Um, so I just encourage people to, to look at Stand in the Park because it's made a huge difference to me. Um, but what I wanted to really, the, the reason I've been trying to, to get on today is just earlier this morning, I, I saw something a couple of weeks ago, but this morning I found um, a link to a radio interview with uh, a guy in Canada. Uh, and this is where I want to just make sure I'm giving you the right information. It's, it's a guy by the name of Dr. Byron Bridal. And he's an associate professor and viral immunologist in the Department of Pathobiology at the University of Guelph in Canada. And I've, I've already put the link to the program in the, the chat. But what he's talking about is he's referencing some very recent research. The program was broadcast on the 31st of May. Um, research from Japan originally, but I think he's directly involved. I need to listen to it again to be to be sure. I only listened to it quickly this morning. Um, but he's talking about, it's actually called, we made a huge mistake, and he's explaining why scientists thought that the vaccine using the spike protein was a good idea. But this latest research has proved that um, it doesn't stay in the muscle where it's injected, it actually moves around the body and how much damage it does in moving around the body. Yeah. So I just thought for Philippa, um, who was talking earlier, I mean, it, it must be dreadful to think your daughter might, might think of having it. And I know I'm in the same position with various people around me um, and many have had it. But 
I think if you listen to that program, sharing it with your daughter, Philippa, might be helpful and anyone else who wants to wake people up, because as long as, as you can get access to that and they don't take it down, it does sound very convincing. And he's talking about research and looking to publish more about it. So I just encourage people to look at that because there is lots of information out there, but this is a new bit that I've not seen before. Yes, and thank you for that. I did see that as well. Um, and I think it was in The Lancet, actually. I oh, I didn't see it in The Lancet, but I've, I've seen it. Um, I've seen his interview and another piece about it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for coming on, Anne. Okay. And um, <clears throat> just to say, in the, I'm just noting, it's difficult for me to monitor the chat log, but uh, if we can stop uh, being bullying in the chat log, please. And, and um, yeah, pl please play nicely um, and be kind to one another. Uh, okay, let's ask Deborah Mendes to come on, who's got her hand up. If anyone else wants to come on, put the hand up, the reaction hand, the yellow hand in the reaction, because it gets you to the top of the screen. Hello. Deborah, hi. Hello. Welcome. You're proving to be a regular. Deborah. I am. I, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I've, I've written a few notes of um, yeah where I'm at this week to share. Um, I went on the march in London. It's not my cup of tea usually to be in crowds in, in the city. Um, it was good. It was a carnival atmosphere and I enjoyed it. It was quite tiring, um, but I think on the whole, it's something that I will do every month. Sometimes I'm thinking, what's the point of speaking to the current system and trajectory when actually we should be creating our new reality and just moving away from that. But I don't feel it was a protest. It was feel it's more of a, a celebration. And I'm just going to close the window. Yeah, I'm wondering where that drilling noise is coming from. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it's always like that here. Um, so that was that. Um, masks, yeah, I go around now all the time without wearing them. No one says anything. Um, sister, I have probably made some progress with. Um, I have been, I had a very difficult com two conversation with family this week, weekend. We, we can only speak for a short period of time. I was very, very calm when I spoke to my sister after the, the news on Friday about the, the Pfizer jab being approved. And of course, I wanted to say that first thing, but I said, hi, how are you? And she went on about the kids and everything. I was like, oh, lovely. <laughs> and, then, and then I said, oh, did you see the, the news, the, the headlines? And um, she said, oh, just for peace of mind, we probably won't be going ahead. Um, but I don't know what the kids will think, you know, so that's the other thing we need to think about now, um, because even if. So um, that's an interesting one, um, uh, but on the front page of The Guardian, it did say on the, on the paper version, not the digital version, it said that some scientists are considering it unethical because the risks of um, getting COVID are higher than the adverse reactions and that was actually on the guardian front page so so I, I told her about that i had it i had it in my pocket wrapped up for, for when I, I spoke to her well um, yeah. and she went she went oh right i can't see that on the digital one i said well it's here i can send it to you on whatsapp so that you know i'm looking at the mainstream media for any anything that sort of gives an indication of, of a suggestion. And she, she started to question, she was going, it's really strange, you know, so she started to question. So there is some hope there. So that was that. And then and I wanted to tell you about an interesting conversation I had with someone in the homeopathic world. Yes. Um, so we're talking about energy medicine and it was kind of a very sort of behind the scenes type conversation with the, com the homeopathic community. And so just interesting to share, um, kind of confidential, but you know, I'm not gonna give the source away, but what usually what they do is um, when a virus comes up or a cold, they'll all get together and look at the symptoms and come up with a particular um, remedy. 
for that year for a virus or cold or whatever flu yeah but but with the COVID they couldn't actually pin down because there's so many different symptoms they couldn't really pin anything down so that that's kind of an interesting um observation um yeah and on the vibrational thing yes you can do so many different things to protect your dna and, and i i've literally been focusing on that um but yeah you know we've got the nanoparticles to to deal with as well um so i think that's it i'm just keeping myself sane by focusing my business and trying to create the new world yeah and you know just really protecting my energy yes 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 thank you deborah thanks for sharing that update and uh yeah yes lots of love to you thanks for yeah, coming on thanks rachel um okay and i'm going to come to uh chrissy chrissy white who i mentioned earlier who i saw yesterday who's just Hi, running my local community support group. Hi, Chris, it was so good to talk to you yesterday, just to have a, a so on the same page, everything that we were talking about. Yes, it was wonderful. Thank you so much. It was a real lifesaver. I feel as though I've been on my own since March 2020, online with lots of encouraging um, people and information. Nevertheless, it's been um, the life of a recluse really since then. So it was wonderful to be out with you. And uh, the cafe scene was Monty Python-esque. It was ridiculous. Uh, and the guy with the hand sanitizer, I, I actually said, don't go too fast on your cash register because you'll create sparks. Um, <laughs> it was just ridiculous. Anyway, um, I haven't got much to say other than I inadvertently, and I'm slightly embarrassed about this, shook hands with a person who's double jabbed which he was very keen to tell me about afterwards. Um, and about 10 minutes later, my right hand was tingling in a very disturbing way. Not the sort of burn that you would experience from steam or flame. It was an internal electromagnetic frequency heat. Very, very unpleasant. And apart from being furious with myself for falling for the handshake, I um, soaked my hand in salt water, used lots of tachyon, ate a copious quantity of charcoal. Um, and within about 48 hours, I probably couldn't feel it anymore, but the psychology of it was still rather disturbing. So what can I say? It's very, very, well, it's critical that, that we avoid anyone with cl in close contact who's had any of these jabs. There's a wonderful, well, I say wonderful, there's a very powerful video um, you're probably familiar with Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. She's pretty damned marvellous. Um, I'm going to find the link and put it in the chat. It's just um, a short clip from one of the um, Sasha Stone, I uh, can't remember the name of the, the yes. board opportunity on Mondays and Thursdays. They've just edited this and it's very very powerful it's terrifying actually for anyone who's new to the information nevertheless we know that sometimes we need to shock people to really um get their attention so that's me thanks again it's wonderful to be here and i'm sorry i missed you earlier i was actually walking back from town so i had headphones on and i was listening on my phone so thanks thanks again yeah thanks chrissy good to see you, and you all. okay right Let's come next to, um, let's come to Brian, Brian Smith. Hello, can you hear me? Hey, Brian. Hi. One of the very visible, outspoken people on this quest. <laughs> yes, I, I just thought I, I would put my good energy into it, up my vibration, give you some support, Rachel. You're doing some remarkable stuff. I want you to tell us more about this eco project you're doing and can you transform it so we can do it in other parts of the country. I'm here in Guildford. I need a project. Yeah. I need to get involved. I'm getting too used to being a loner. Yeah. I want to come out of the cave and join the people. Yeah. It's Happy a it's energy. been it's been if you yeah, it's been a very fascinating journey. And one thing is abundantly clear from um, attempting to corral this eco community is that the system does not want 
us to create community living. There are so many blocks to it. No. I yes, can't even yes. begin to tell you. So just but to we, we are up in energy. It's, we are getting stronger, Rachel. People are coming round. I know, but you see... You are doing amazing work, <laughs> Rachel. You give me so much hope and faith. The thing but is, you, Brian... You understand business models, Rachel. I do, yeah. And, and But let me just explain this, because it feels like an important thing, and you, you kind of touched on my exhaustion, to be quite honest. Uh, of course, yes, you're a high performance. Because, of course, we are all... We are all... We've all got these deep programs embedded in us and we're all striving to create a different way of being but for us to create a different way of being we've got to uninstall all these programs so all of the programs of scarcity fear what if the planning people don't let us what if what if what if what if and so of course and the legal system is completely set up to so lawyers have a have a um they they make an oath to the bar council that they will uphold english law so if you go to them and you say i want to do something and, and assert common law rights they will say well we can't act for you because we uphold english law and i am so, up against this now rachel yes uh, yes so i am trying to fight here in guildford i have a complaint we have Purbright just down the road here it's in Sorry, yes, where Bill Gates has got that patent. We should all be complaining about it. But um, yes, we are all even. We are all the roads. I do the roads thing. But yes, I have a complaint here. They, they have tried gaslighting me. The NHS, yes, we, we are up against the NHS as well. But we have got a complaint. We will come together and we will get our councils back again. They have been corrupted, but hopefully, yes, with everybody's help, we can start from the bottom up, add the real value again with the community projects and the community health. They have been putting it apart since the war, yes. Yeah. Mr Jones in Dad's Army went through it. They went through it in a second. We're going through it in now, but it is time, isn't it? We all realise... And yeah. we will do our community projects. Yeah, yeah. But you're but, right, we need legal advice. Well, this is the this is the thing. So just to give an example of this. So from a planning point of view, planning restrictions make it really, really difficult for large groups of people to live on a piece of land massively difficult. There's also affordable housing legislation, which means if more than nine people have residences on a land, then you're into affordable housing and you have to pay across to the council a certain sort of almost like a fine. And but but by this on the other side of that, if you attempt to crowdfund the purchase of a freehold land together, so you're all clubbing together and you're pooling resources. If those, if all of the people that are putting into the crowdfund aren't living there then you're in an FCA investment scheme, which attracts an extra 15% of stand, stamp duty. So you, so basically it, uh, it, it thwarts you at every turn. And it's just like this, I, I've been going through this maze of red tape legislation and I've come to the conclusion that the entire system is specifically set up to keep us entrapped in the old system and it's like trying to extricate yourself from mud or quicksand or something like that it's you're amazing rachel you're a queen i am a humble knight you see a humble builder a jack of all trades and i like to build it with my hands with the arts and crafts with the music you you do you do the administration and we need administration it yeah. all needs to be managed we need to manage the forest. We need to manage the water. The water needs to be structured. It all, all needs elbow yeah. grease, the secret source, the right energy. And uh, I believe you are doing it, Rachel, being the best you can be. And I yeah. think if you can push through 
we will help you and you will help everybody else as well. With I get money. that. I get that. But of course, you know, people then putting in a big chunk of money to a project like that, where you're saying we can't get planning permission. We can't we we're not we're going to try and do it outside of the law. And, and by the way, could you put your money into this project? Well, of course, yeah. their lawyer is going to say, don't touch it with a barge pole because you're going to lose your money. And so, so of course, like, and so then it becomes like filling a leaky bucket because people coming along and like, oh, it's too frightening. It's too, oh, we're not going to get planning permission. We don't want to get into conflict with the council. Oh, I, it's too risky for me. And so we are in betwixt and between the two worlds and, and uh, it's just exhausting to be quite well, I have noticed some political parties are starting to pick up on it and are starting to get their councils back. You know, Bodice is our queen. Now, you know, it's like we all drink from the cup and we all are Christ conscious Christian soldiers pushing forward and, and some of them are pushing forward and they are getting their council back, which means we will get our funding back. Yeah. And we create the value. The whole monetary system is changing. The reset, Rachel. Yeah. Nobody yeah. knows how the this reset is, the thing. is going to affect us. Yeah. Some people are talking about a quantum system. Yeah. I yeah. don't trust Bitcoin entirely. I don't trust the banks at all, the fiat currency. So, yes, I believe there will be some new value coming and uh, the new banking system, which is adding value. Money makes money. How yep. banks should work, how building society should work. It has just been corrupted. The system is pretty much already there. It has just been corrupted by some rotten apples, is it not? Yeah. Yeah. Can, can we not get a commission to take the rotten apples out? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> He's just said and done, Rachel. You are amazing. You glow, Rachel. Oh, you give me good you. energy. The thank sun you, is John. shining here. And I have to say that just the simple thing of, of our local community support group, which isn't rooted in any freehold land it just literally we meet and we gather and it's just a tiny group and it's just it is it really is the thing that keeps me keeps my cork bobbing on the on the water is just that simple little group and just that camaraderie really of just a small group of people who we absolutely are on the same page and and that and and also the actual meeting in physical person as opposed to on zoom so important to meet in person, hold hands, to hug, to chat, and we do drumming and dancing and a little bit of singing. So it's it is nectar for my soul at this current time. I'm so glad that I set that up and initiated that. And you know, it sounds some, amazing. Yeah, some of those in that group are also part of the eco community group, but it's just it's actually been quite exhausting. This makes you stronger, doesn't it? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well done, Rachel. You are doing it. I will let you get on. Thank okay. you for having me on. Thank and, you. Uh, I look forward to the rest of your content. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Let's let's uh, end with Evelyn Banner, who is has got her hand up, and we'll end it with you. Hi, everyone yeah. from Northern Italy. Hi, hi, uh, hi again. I did speak once before many weeks ago, but I, I just wanted to say quickly because we're coming to the end um, that those um, emails that are coming to light from Fauci, um, I don't know if anybody noticed, but there was a few from uh, Mr. Zuckerberg offering his services uh, that like Facebook and Google platforms would keep the narrative the way they wanted it. Yes. So that's, that's quite telling that he was involved in it right from the beginning, you know, to keep things uh, running the way they wanted them to run. Absolutely. So no, no false, uh, what we're trying to do now. Yeah. And also all the emails from between him and Bill Gates as well. Between I don't see those. I've not seen those yet. <laughs> yeah. Apparently there were numerous emails between Fauci and Bill Gates. So what has Bill Gates got to do with Fauci unless there's money involved and influence? Yeah, yeah. so all these people involved, there's something 
And I don't know that it's smoke screens. I think there's something been happening from the very beginning to get us to this stage where we are now. But I think it's all starting to break apart for us, which is great. Slowly, but it is all unfurling. Yeah, so we just have to hold strong, keep the pressure on, keep shining the light, yeah. and just just this and just not giving up uh and just i you know that is absolutely and it is exhausting but you know we're in the stretch now and so this is all these resources to keep coming back to center form our local community groups find like-minded people go to stand in the park protest keep speaking out you know never say die <laughs> <laughs> you know this has to, you know because they are this is a machine and it's grinding grinding through so we have to have just as much or if not more tenacity determination <laughs> commitment commitment relentless the thorn in their side the grit in their shoe the that won't go away that won't be silenced this is mm. the only solution now and to keep shining the light and just trust that this is all going to collapse to dust and the system will fall at some point and we and it can be replaced by a completely different way of being on the planet yeah which that's is what will happen yeah, yeah that ultimately. is that has to be what we keep visioning and just keep coming back to that vision mm -hmm. uh, of of a different way of being on the planet in tune with nature natural healing nutrition strong immune system loving kindness community support yeah, absolutely and that has to be the way forward and to uh, uh and for the capitalist elite to uh be dismantled basically mm. hopefully they will the snake will eat its own tail that's at some level <laughs> okay yeah. so on that thought let's let's end that call end the call there and thank you for coming on evelyn thank you for that i'll just come back to the screens and um just wave you all a goodbye thank you so much for joining and sending you lots of love and have a great monday okay bye for now So see you again in two weeks time. Bye for now.